when it comes to the things Massachusetts is known for, high-tech innovation would be at the top of the list, right after Tom Brady, the Red Sox, and maybe Matt Damon. All of those knowledge companies based here mean big bucks. In fact, Massachusetts has the highest concentration of tech workers in the country. Almost 10% of private sector jobs are in these fields. But Boston and the other high-tech hub, San Francisco, weren't exactly strongholds for Trump during the election. And some of the president-elect's positions on trade, overseas manufacturing, and immigration could negatively impact the overall industry. Trump met today with a who's who of tech, including Tim Cook from Apple, Sheryl Sandberg from Facebook, and Jeff Bezos from Amazon, among others. Yesterday, Microsoft co-founder and philanthropist Bill Gates sat down with Trump. We had a, a good conversation about innovation, uh, how it can help in health, education, uh, impact of foreign aid and energy, and uh, a wide-ranging conversation about uh, the power of innovation. Last night in Wisconsin, Trump said he was meeting with the giants of Silicon Valley about growing jobs, but the tech community has been apprehensive about how rhetoric and reality will intersect here. Joining me are Lila Alphonse, managing editor at U.S. News & World Report, and David Gerzoff-Richard, a professor at Emerson College who specializes in tech and social media. Thank you both for coming in. Let's start by recapping uh, for ourselves and the audience some of the points of friction between the president-elect and the luminaries of the tech world. Uh, in recent years and months. Can, what, what are your favorite points where Trump lashed out at the people who were in that room today? Well, the easiest person to start with is Jeff Bezos because you've got him in charge of Amazon, but you also have him, him um, behind the Washington Post, who Trump famously blacklisted from some of his events um, during the course of his campaign. Um, he talks about Bezos having a monopoly and yeah. having access to too much information. He and said that Amazon is going to have such problems yes. if he's elected. Bigly. The election. Yeah, bigly, yes. bigly. Now, how about you? What, what are your favorite <laughs> beefs between Trump and the tech world? Well, you know, staying with the Jeff Bezos uh, theme was, uh, you know, Jeff got onto Twitter and had this hashtag, send Donald mm -hmm. to space. Um, so that, that went over, as you can imagine, really well with the, the Trump train. Um, there's also the, the idea of, of manufacturing, um, where jobs are. We look at companies like Apple, um, how many iPhones that are, are being manufactured in China, um, which is a real point of contention with, uh, with Mr. Trump, mm -hmm. and uh, where they should be made. Um, getting back to Amazon, the automation of jobs. That is a big, big challenge. So you got substantive too quickly, because I just want to mention a couple oh, of things, sure. and then hold, keep those well, thoughts you in also mind. Had Facebook. You had Sheryl Sandberg was there, and Facebook, and the whole fake news issue, and he accused, fake news, big thing, he yeah. accused Google and Twitter of burying news about the investigation of right. Hillary Clinton. He berated Apple for not yeah. unlocking that iPhone that was used by the San Bernardino shooters, yeah. and he, uh, I, I believe, said that. Um, well, actually, I was going to mention Amazon again, but we already <laughs> covered that. So let's get back to the substance, which you wanted to. Take take us into automation of jobs, mm -hmm. trade uh, with China or, or jobs, mm -hmm. commodities being produced in China and then shipped back here. What Cyber are the security. other substantive points? Okay. Cybersecurity, encryption, um, two big things. In fact, Steve Dorsey, um, not Steve Dorsey, sorry, from Twitter. No, that's fine. Uh, Jack, Jack, Jack Dorsey, Dorsey yeah. sorry, from Twitter, was not invited to today's meeting. They said that they'd follow up with him at a later date. Why is that? Um, well, yesterday he did give Edward Snowden a huge platform to talk to, I think it was 150,000 people live on Twitter using Periscope talking about encryption and security and and um, perhaps that didn't sit well with the president-elect. Also, Twitter's doing great right now. I mm -hmm. mean, with, with what Donald Trump has done to Twitter, of, the, of all the tech companies, mm -hmm. they were flatlining in terms of their growth. It was projected yeah. that they were not going to grow at all. But now, all of a sudden, every country in the world is getting on Twitter and trying to understand this platform, so they have to follow this guy. Okay, so we've talked about big issues where there might be some mutual interest, even if they disagree sharply. What do you think Trump wants from the tech community, and what might they want from him that would make them show up today? Well, I think the jobs issue is a huge one. Um, we've seen fantastic growth. We've had that tech boom, which perhaps the bubbles burst a little bit. But um, I think the, the jobs and keeping jobs in the U.S. versus sending jobs or work, at least, if not actual jobs, over to China. I mean, he did nominate someone to run the Labor Department who is a big proponent of automation. So I'm not sure that automation is one of his chief concerns. 
I'm not sure he's really as concerned about the workers as he is about the actual jobs and the products being made here. Okay, so the president-elect might want to convince tech companies to do more domestic hiring as opposed to... Or domestic manufacturing, domestic manufacturing. whether that's hiring yeah. or whether that's keeping Automated the dollars in the U.S. and and buying their their components in the U.S. David, what might they want from him? Might they want to change his mind on net neutrality, for example, the idea that all information on the, on the net should be basically disseminated equally, which he's apparently not very keen on? Certainly net neutrality. Um, there's, there's a lot of concerns of how Donald Trump is going to look at uh, big data, big data on government servers, if that will exist, if it will be wiped out. Um, these companies have been um, instrumental in, in creating that data, storing that data, moving that data. Um, so that's that's a, a big question that they need to figure out there. Just um, just so I'm clear on this, when you talk about big data on government servers, this is information that's been amassed over the course of years by the Obama administration that in a policy that he might not continue. Or am I getting that wrong? So uh, a- anything that is a .dot gov uh, site is falls under the purview of Donald Trump, and if he wants to wipe out scientific data about oh, okay, I don't know the it. climate, mm-hmm. you know he has the uh, the ability to do that. So there's there's a lot there's a lot at stake here uh, for for these guys, and I think also just understanding where they stand with Donald Trump. I mean, he uh, with Twitter and with his constituency has this uh, magnifying glass that he can point at any one company, and we've seen uh, how he's handled himself with some of some companies in the aerospace industry, it's not Boeing, right? dropping their 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 stock price mm-hmm. and and their market share by billions of dollars just by mm-hmm. tweeting. Mm-hmm. So by that reading, do you see the willingness of all these people who may have clashed with him in the past to go to New York and and smile for the cameras as an attempt to play defense and to I avoid think, being the target of singling out like we saw with Boeing? I'm not sure yeah. that it's defense. I think it's just kind of good diplomacy in a in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, they, there's also an issue of homeland security. There's an issue of surveillance that we don't quite know where Trump stands on. Um, he did criticize Apple for not unlock, unlocking the yeah. iPhone for the San Bernardino shooters. We've got Yahoo with all of their issues with data breaches. Um, so there's a lot to talk about there, and I think that it just makes sense for these heads of, of the tech world to be willing to have a conversation. Do you expect the thaw that we saw uh, on display in New York City today to last, or do you think we're going to be back to friction pretty quickly between not, him and them? I'm not sure it was a thaw as much as it was grown-ups being grown-ups. All right. That, mm-hmm. That's a very nice sort of dignified way to frame it. Did <laughs> I go too far in calling it a thaw? No, I don't I, well, The one thing that we've learned following Donald Trump is that to expect – the unexpected, yep. and we that, have no idea what's. So we have we have absolutely no idea what's uh, what's coming down the pipe for these guys. All right, thank you both. And I just got to uh, get in here that the uh, mm-hmm. other clash I was trying to think of. He took Sheryl Sandberg of Facebook to task yes. for, I believe, pushing her lean in That's argument right. as opposed to focusing on getting Facebook stock price up. He said that she had a big ego. So oh, that's right. There Forgot we have it. That. Mm-hmm. All right, Lila, David, thank you both. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you.